Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, I have a fun one for you today. And I'm going to be working off a picture that I downloaded uh, from Artistry by... One second. Artistry by Lisa Marie from Etsy. And it's a, P, a PDF or a GIF download. And I think it was like a little bit over $2 for the download. Now this is a grayscale. Having this cat being so close and you being able to see the individual hairs so clearly, I thought this was a perfect one to do this tutorial. And what you're going to need, is this is a little different, and I touched on it a little bit with the leaves in my last video, you're going to need a dotting tool. You can get them off of Amazon and a small one the smallest finest one that you can find I think I even have smaller than this but this is the one that I can find it's got a little ball at the end and this is a very easy technique wherever you want the paper to stay lighter now it's not going to stay white white but wherever you want to see it lighter you're going to take the ball and scratch it in take the ball and scratch it in work if you're working with hair work in small areas now when I'm doing this I have this paper underneath a piece of paper towel and that's to give it a little push so that you can delve deeper into the paper I printed this out on cardstock 110 cardstock so be careful you don't completely go through the paper and just go through some of the lines. Then you take another pencil and in this case I'm going to be working in browns. I'm going to start off with some artichoke even though it's this is only one color. Very light touch I'm going to go over the area that I used. Wherever you did not scratch, the paper should pick up your pigment. But see how I'm going over this area over and over again? And it's not turning? Well, that's what you want. So when you are doing this, you can keep very fine hairs. See how bright that turns up? you can keep very fine hairs white and now I'm gonna work in another area over here and I'm going over it and that works out. Now before I do this eye for you, I wanted to show it to you on another one. This is by Mariola Badek and he also has a Etsy shop. Now I wanted to demonstrate hair because this technique works really well with hair. And let me just get out the right color that I was working with. Now I'm going to do this one over the area where I want my highlight and some of the hairs leading to it I scratched in. Now very lightly I'm just taking my pencil and going over the entire thing. I'm not even worrying. That's why this is more like a craft, but it is a lot of fun. And it's big bang for your bucks. And you have the highlight. Go in, do this one. Now, this works really well on beards 
all hair. And you could actually close your eyes and color over this. I think it's called etching. So once you're done putting that other color in and you actually see where those light areas are, you can take a darker color. I'm going to use my black. I don't see my dark brown on here. Is this my dark brown? Dark umber. Okay, that's better. I'm going to take my dark umber and I'm going to go in and I'm going to darken up some individual hairs on here and put in some shadow color. And it comes out really perfect. Now, that there is drawbacks to using this method. Well, the first one is you're damaging your paper. So if that makes a difference to you on something like this where I'm working on cardstock, this is a fun technique. I don't, you don't really see the damage at all on the paper. If you should make a mistake, it is very easy to, to fix it. All you do is press a little harder and scrub the color into where that hair was. So if you change your mind about an area that you want darker, you can make it darker. Okay, so again... Here's my highlight. And I'm actually going in the other direction and there it shows up. And if you want to darken up some areas, you go ahead and do it. So that's on hair. I wasn't going to do this entire picture. I was only going to do the eyes and How to use some the of the fur tool. to demonstrate. But this was a great picture to do. A lot of fun. I spent like six hours today working on it. Finished it. Hung it up. <laughs> it became part of my collection. So now I have three hours of video finishing this cat picture. There is tons of information in there and I hate to like not give you that information. But it's also I think three and a half hours. So I'm going to cut it back as much as I can. If not, I'm probably going to put it out in two videos because it's so long. That's going to be what I'm going to be doing, I guess, over the next couple of days, I had some other things that I keep wanting to put out there already filmed and ready to go, and something comes up. I may put out two videos for, like, a couple of days. I may or may not. It depends. Because I'm really, really super backed up with videos, and I want to move on to other things. So, in the meantime, I had a question asked to me. I want to get the name of the person. Okay, D. Rice asked me a question. How do you color the other items on the page that are not the focal point? How do you make a focal point stand out besides doing shadowing? Well, that's an excellent question. And I've addressed this a few times. The background is called negative space. And you can do any type of background. You can do everything. I look on my list of videos. I've got Starry Night. I've got Northern Lights. I've got a simple fade. I've got the blurred. I've got the bokeh. Is that bokeh? Background. I have black background. 
I, I've got, and there's other ones too. So those are all different backgrounds that you can put on this. But like, I have like a rule about my negative space. If there's a lot of negative space and it's taking up a very large percentage of the page, then I'll do a background. It could be, I could put in a moon, I could put in a sun, I could do a water, you name it. You can, the clouds, there's a host of everything that you could do when I had videos on it, on all those objects that you could put in. And that's when, it's a very large amount of negative space. But say you have only a little bit of negative space. Say, like, up in the corner of the cat, there's just a little bit of room. You don't want to make that too busy because the cat is really your focal point. For that, I would go with a very light fade, something that's not going to deflect your eyes. Now, what happens if there are objects in the background and which is specifically what you asked, what if there was objects in the background, but you want to make one of those objects your focal point? Well, there's a lot of different books out there that have stuff like that. Like, you look at Fairy Miracles, it's got everything in the page. I mean, those pages were just, objects were just thrown all over the place. How do you pick one as being the focal point? You probably, in the, that case, like to say that book... You really can't, and you have to see where the negative space is, like, in it. There may be three objects, or f you, you try to have it an odd number at three. Three objects that will trail your eyes over to looking at something else. You can do that through color. Um, you could do that through light and dark. There's plenty of things that you can do. If it's a room scene and say there's a table and a bench and a television and you want the table to be your focal point, but there's all these other things in the room, turn out the lights. Play with your lighting. Uh, do a focal point that's brighter than everything else. And all this takes a little bit of practice, some videos, some practice and it'll become easier some coloring books meant for there to be many objects and the picture doesn't really tell that much of a story but I always try to look at a picture and say what is this picture trying to say and think of the story is it how does the story end or does this story begin and look at the picture if that picture is telling you a story of what is happening make the noun your focal point the main character is your focal point sometimes it's not in the middle of the page so you have to keep that in mind too but once you get that object um Make the room red. Do I mean, you can actually do everything in shades of red and pink and then make a blue highlighted object. Um, so that's some of my ideas. And, you know, as you watch videos, you'll get more and more ideas and it won't seem so intimidating. And... Sometimes pages in coloring books that have lots of objects in it are the best books to have because sometimes you're just not in the mood to color a full page. And I, I always like to be able to go, go over to one of those books and all those Maria Trolte and, and Hannah Calzone, they all do those types of books. They go in, there's a million things on the page, most of the time, I, col I color one or two of them, and I enjoy just coloring the one or two objects. I spend a lot of time on a tiny object and walk away with something that's popping off my page, and then 
I'll move on to the next. It's all what you like to do. And you're asking the wrong person, do I finish all my pictures? I am definitely one that does not finish everything she starts. I have the attention span of a goldfish. So it's whatever makes you happy, whatever you're in the mood for, and never push it past that because then it's not any fun. With those words, I'm going to say good night to you guys, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Or actually, maybe later on today, and I'll get, obviously, the next video is the eyes, the cat eyes, and how I did that. And then we move on to more in the fur and so many tips. I babbled again. It seems like when I'm babbling is when I give out the best information. So I will see you guys in my next video. Take care.